Welcome back to the shack guys, it's Big Les and we're here in the shack again and today we're doing a nice, simple and cheap cook and it's barbecued meatloaf. So this is your traditional meatloaf but instead of having tomato base we're going to have barbecue sauce mixed in it guys and then we're going to smoke it on our Farnetto Basso 18 inch smoker just over there. Come in guys and let's get this super tasty treat prepared. It's a nice simple prep guys. We've got one kilo of 80-20 ground beef. We want that fat content in there to make it nice and juicy. And before we started in any of the other ingredients, I've got some bread crumbs and this was just four slices of white bread that I've run in the food processor. I'm going to take about a quarter of a cup of milk just to soak them up and start softening them up guys. So we'll leave them at the side. And to that one kilo of 80-20 beef we've got 500 grams of sausage meat and I've just taken some nice breakfast sausages guys and taken the skin off. So we'll add them into the mix. Take our breadcrumbs and then when I was blitzing up the breadcrumb guys I took one large onion and I just ran that through the food processor as well just to make it nice and fine if you want it obviously coarse guys just chop it with a knife but my kids like it to uh, melt into the meatloaf and then for spices we're going to add a tablespoon of garlic get that in there yummy a tablespoon of coarse ground black pepper and i'm going for larry's seasoned salt so a tablespoon of that You've just got normal table salt or sea salt it'll do just fine and as i said this is that barbecue sauce and this is my favorite at the minute this is a jack daniels honey barbecue and we're going to do half a cup of that guys and the last one ingredient a couple of eggs and this is the best bit guys gloves on I'm gonna squidge and mix all of this up so once you've mushed all of that meat together guys incorporated all of them flavors you can either put that into your loaf pan or you can add that last final secret ingredient and we're going to go with some burger cheese guys i've got eight slices of cheese and i have left it to the end so that i don't mush it up completely and i'm just going to cube these up and then incorporate some nuggets of cheese within our meatloaf guys it's going to be like a cheeseburger meatloaf. I'm just going to quickly distribute this cheese throughout the meatloaf and then let's get it put into the pans. And that cheese now beautifully incorporated into that meat. Now this is enough to make two one kilo meatloafs and because I want to smoke these and get a beautiful back on the outside and my fingers are sticking to everything i'm going to line two loaf pans with cling film and then i'm going to pop in my meatloaf squidge that down this is just going to help me take it out because i'm going to pop these in the freezer for a couple of hours to set up guys Make sure you compact it down. I 
I hate cling film, but it's going to help me get it out. That's both loaf pans now, fully filled up. And we're just going to pull that cling film over the top, guys. Give them a good press. I'm going to pop these now in the freezer for a couple of hours, or if you prefer, overnight until you're ready to smoke them. See you shortly, guys. So our meatloafs have been a couple of hours, guys, and they're just starting to firm up. We'll turn them out onto the board. And see these beautiful pieces of cheese in there. And we'll pop off that cling film. See, that cling film's made it nice and easy to get them out. Two meat bricks. Also, them being slightly frozen and makes them easier to handle, guys. Now, we're going to slather these up and rub them up because, like I say, we're doing not your traditional meatloaf, but your barbecue meatloaf, guys. So, French's mustard, a little brush. Let's glaze these up. Once we've got a slaver on there, guys, take your favourite barbecue rub, and I've just got a nice beefy rub, and then we're going to rub up the outsides of these meatloafs. Let these sit on the side for five minutes. Let's get that farmetto roaring hot. We're going to be smoking these at around 120 degrees Celsius. 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got my heat beads in the bottom. I've got them lit. And in a minute, I'm going to pop in my nice piece of beech wood. And because these have got them doors on them, it's easy to add your smoking wood, guys. Come in and let's have a look. So I've got that fire lit. It's just starting to burn down to embers. But while it's still burning, I'm just going to pop in a beautiful piece of beech wood straight on top of that flame. Shut up the door. Let this come up to temp. Once the smoke starts rolling, let's get on the meatloafs. The smoke's rolling, as you can see, smells divine. She's up on that just over 120 degrees Celsius. And obviously, as we put the meat in, it'll just steady down and we'll dial in all the vents. But at the minute, they're currently all open, guys. Let's pop off that lid. Take my trusty pizza peel. Try not to crack my head. I'm going to slide on the meatloafs. I'm going to close up that lid and smoke them for a couple of hours, guys, and then I'll stick in my meat probe. I'm going to be taking these up to around 73 degrees Celsius, but by then, because it's frozen, we should get a great back crust on the outside and that juicy meat on the inside with oozing pockets of cheese, guys. Come in when it's time to slather them up with some BBQ sauce. See you soon, guys. So a couple of hours in, guys. I haven't touched them, but let's have a look. see beautiful smoky color the pockets of cheese just oozing out and we're reaching that finishing temp so we're going to glaze these up now with some barbecue sauce guys and finish them off i'm going to take some more of that jackie d's barbecue sauce Glaze it over the top. And brush that in. Put the lid back on the barbecue. And we'll give them 10 minutes, guys. And then we'll get in for slicing. 
10 minutes to pass, guys. Look at that shine. Now, hopefully, these are going to come off, and I want to let's get our pizza peel. Put them onto the chopping board. So pop these on the chopping board. And we're going to let them just firm up now, guys. Give them 10 minutes because they are going to be absolutely molten. Just let that cheese start to firm back up. So 10 minutes on the side and let's get in for a slice. Got a beautiful bark on these guys beautiful color let's see what they look like inside open it up so you can see hopefully on there it's a beautiful smoke ring it's a beautiful slice i'll cut myself a couple more slices and then go in for the taste test these are absolutely delish. Look at them beautiful slices. And I'm sure you can see great smoke ring. It's a super juicy, absolutely packed full of flavour. Dave, do you want some? Can't see Dave, he's just down here. He's enjoying his taste test. He's looking after his little brother. These are absolutely stunning. Super cheap. I think this has probably cost me eight pounds. So you can't really go wrong. It's super tasty, super flavorful. I was proud of this. This is one of my favorite cooks I've done in a long while. Other than the tomahawk steak, I think somewhere up here. Uh, I think me and Dave are going to go inside. I've made some potato hash brown waffles. I'm going to serve this up with some barbecue beans and fried egg, guys. I hope you enjoyed the cook. Like, subscribe, do all them good things down below. And I'll see you in the next cook somewhere over here.